Here we are continuing with uh, my methods, building a kilt, a uh, bespoke kilt from start to finish. Now, remember we've shaped the apron. We've put the front apron with front canvas, ap uh, front apron canvas in. Now what I've done is I have a spare buckle and tab, which I keep for just this purpose, um, which I've temporarily sewn in its correct location to the buttonhole and a, tempor a temporary strap, which I'm gonna put in and I put in a couple, I don't go quite to the middle, I put in a couple of holes from the end and I feed it through the buttonhole because when, when I try this to the client, well, you're gonna see what happens next. So here we go. And the client has very kindly offered, uh, has agreed with to, to shoot this with us. Now I'm gonna reach, can you pass me my chalk? <laughs> this always happens. This is why I should be wearing a suit, so I can have this in the ticket pocket. So, I've put the kilt on the client. I'm locating the top of the kilt at the natural waist. I'm bringing the inside apron across, and I'm going to quickly check. Yes, it's hanging right just to the top of the kneecap. Now, here, as you can see, the strap, the end of the strap, is just poking through from the buttonhole. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask him to suck in as hard as he ever can. And then I mark it with chalk. And then from here, I'm going to put it back on the table. I'm going to temporarily sew this with white, with basting thread, because it's not going to stay here. I'm going to temporarily sew this in and then progress. So let's hit pause, please. Are you, are you going? Yes. Okay. So here we are. And as you can see, this is why it's important to check your measurements, because it looked fine as I was marking the end of the, st the strap there, but actually the center has to be there. So again, I'm just using... I'm just using basting thread. It's not waxed or anything else because um, this, I'm just attaching this so that we can correctly um, lay out and mark the front apron. Now you can do that, and in the later video I'll be showing how to do that in the absence of the client. But um, as I've mentioned elsewhere, I'm getting more and more particular about the quality of my work and if the customer is able to come in I, I ask him to do so so that we can actually try it to the figure as it were and that means that I mean uh, sure competence and skill is a great thing but it's wonderful to have nature working on your side as well and you can hang the cloth on the client and see exactly exactly what the cloth wants to do so I'm going to speed this up a little bit this will be typically the, the moment with my luck that I put the needle clean through my finger. <clears throat> Probably wouldn't bleed though because of what, close to 50 years of sewing by hand. I, uh, it's all, it's all scar tissue. Okay, just about there. As you can see, this is, this is sort of a, a cheap and cheerful sewing job. Oh, yeah, I just put it through my thumb there. <laughs> cheap and cheerful sewing job because it's all about just keeping the thing in place and then after we'll we'll mark it and then tear it down again okay this will okay one last stitch just not to tempt fate good okay now wrong this goes here this chalk goes here now see again, see the reason why I've got a bit of an overlap there, I've been making the inner apron a bit wider, is to avoid, you see how that shirt just started to pinch there, to avoid that from happening. And if the shirt will do it, sometimes a, a bit of skin will do it as well, and it's not pleasant. So we feed the strap through. Now here's, if you wouldn't mind rotating it so slightly this way, sir. Here's something that I've, I've mentioned before, and I'll keep mentioning it, saying again, is a mistake that people make. They get the strap through the buttonhole, and they yank to pull the, use the kilt as a corset. And if we do that, see, I make this seem more strongly than anybody else. But if we do that, even this soon will blow out. So the trick is we get it through the buckle. We ask the gentleman to suck in as hard as ever again. And then we do it up. Now, on the finished kilt, there we go, sir, if you'll just, thank you. On the finished kilt, no, actually in this case as well, I'm doing it a little tighter than is possibly comfortable but over time with a finished garment when he's wearing this 
the kilt is going to shape itself to him because we've tailored it to be a section of a cone. As he wears this kilt, it's actually going to get more comfortable as the kilt shapes itself to him. And to that end, this very tight uh, strap is is it's not going to be uncomfortable in the future because it's going to shape itself. Now, if you wouldn't mind just turning this way, sir. Thank you. Now, here we have the front apron. It's if you've been sorry, sir. If you've been over, thing changes. It's he's, we're wearing it a little bit low right now, but I, I don't worry about that. I'm going to double check it. But what I'm looking for is the hang of the left hand edge of the outside apron. Um, in a minute, in fact, would you mind just doing that, just pinching that, sir? What I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly, quickly base that down. He said, putting a needle clean through his finger. Yeah. Okay. I guess if I'm going to be an internet star, I should have rows of needles made up with thread already. Come on, get in there. There we go. Very good. So I'm looking at the at the A line. And the cloth is literally pretty much between the cloth and gravity. It's showing me exactly where the A line should be. Now, you can do it without this, right? With experience and frankly, good luck. You can do it without this, but if you can do it with a client present, it just makes it so much better for everyone. So there we are. There's my A line. And as the gentleman is standing, it's almost certainly this is going to be a powder horn curve when I'm laying it flat on the table. But right now, it looks darn straight. Okay, good. Now that allows me, that shows the powder, that shows the curve on the left side of the apron. The right side of the apron, all I have to do, thank you, I got it now, is there's the first seam. We're going to mark the edge of the kilt at the first seam. I go down to the hip. I mark a second time there. And I could trace it all the way down, but I'm not going to. What I'm going to do is, again, follow that curve that I decided that I struck on the other side. I'm just going to mimic that on this side. So there we are. That's the this is the forward fitting. From here, I will sew up the apron. I'll put in the fringe. Um, probably won't need one final fitting before I finish it. I think I'm confident with how I look. This looks here. That from this I can go on and finish the garment, and so that I can call them in two, three, four days. Because they're going to have to iron this as well, of course. So it might be Monday. This is today's Thursday. It might be Monday. I'll be able to give him a call and say, look, it's finished. And he can just come on. And when he, when he comes to the last to pick up his kilt, we still put it on him to make sure that we're both satisfied with what we've what we've created here. Because nothing leaves the shop until both of us are happy with it. So, okay, thank you for that. Carry on.